You know, I've kind of done this twice already. Once where I was freaking exhausted after getting up every morning to go look for moose. Morning. And once after going out and... Hey guys, Clint hates when I do this. No gang signs, what's the matter with you? Today on the Artemis channel, we are gonna talk about moose and winter ticks. And I'm gonna give you everything you need to know about moose and winter ticks in 10 minutes. Stick around to the end and I'm gonna throw in a little bit about uh, brain worm as well. Angie and I went up to the great north woods in early June as we like to do every year. We like to go up before school gets out, the crowds are a little thinner and the weather is often cool, so we see more wildlife. That certainly proved true this year because in between fishing and me not putting a couple of rainbows in the kayak. <laughs> we managed to see moose on 15 separate occasions. While we certainly saw the same moose more than once, this was more than we've ever encountered before. On one hand, it was really cool to see them, but on the other, seeing that many in such a small area may not be a good thing as far as the moose are concerned. I know what you're thinking. What the hell are you talking about, Steve? My initial intention was to just compile a bunch of clips and stills and put them out there for you guys to enjoy. It was very clear to us as we were watching the moose that they were all getting their ass kicked by winter tick infestations. I figured we just can't put a video out without some sort of explanation as to what was going on with these moose. So I started to do a little research. Man, did I go down the rabbit hole. Winter ticks are not the same ticks that you get on you when you go out in the woods. They are a completely different species with a different life cycle. Check out this graphic on it from New Hampshire Fish and Game who borrowed it from the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. So let's start down here at the bottom. In late spring, early summer, female ticks drop off uh, their host and they lay up to 4,000 eggs at a time. And they'll do this in the leaf litter and, and debris in the bottom of the woods, right? Late summer, early fall, those egg hatch and the larva climb up vegetation, going on a quest. Quest? I'm already on a quest. A quest to get my swamp back. No, not that kind of quest. They go on a quest looking for an organism to be their host. And I'll give you three guesses as to who the host is going to be. Boominkle Moose here. So that brings us around to the fall and winter, where these quest-seeking little tick larvae have attached themselves to a moose deal with these winter ticks is that they're on the moose through all of their life cycles larva nymph and adult one tick no big deal but the winter tick doesn't work that way let's go back to the graphic i know i'm on this graphic for a while bear with me the larva climb up vegetation as a hatch group linking legs as they quest for the host back to the quest thing right it's a quest and then when the moose happens to walk by here's a few thousand ticks bam Bam. But it's more than that because it's not uncommon to see a moose with 30 or 40,000 ticks. I mean, it's horrible, right? Look at the back end of this poor moose. Look at all the ticks on this one. So how does this affect the moose? Well, for starters, they're in overall poorer health coming right out of winter when foraging is at its lowest. Then to combat the blood loss, they begin to metabolize muscle and fat stores, resulting in weight loss, like you see in this particular moose here. Certainly you guys can see the physical effects on the moose here. The attention and the energy spent rubbing and itching results in hair loss, making it harder to stay warm in fall weather, causing the moose to expend even more energy. Here's some pretty shocking numbers. An infestation of winter ticks can result in a daily blood loss of just under 20% of its total volume of blood. That's per day, guys. For calves, it's much worse. A calf with 30,000 ticks could experience an almost 60% blood loss daily. Combine that with a normal winter weight loss of 20 or 30% and you'll end up with a 60 to 70% of moose calves not surviving the infestation. 
Just a little anecdotal note here. Uh, Ange and I didn't see a single calf while we were up there. Although an adult moose can survive a high winter tick infestation, they also lose more weight than normal or in poor condition earlier in the spring. It's problematic for cows as well. They may not be healthy enough to carry a fetus to full term and then providing milk for calves once they are born is an issue. The result? Unhealthy cows have fewer calves and juvenile cows that manage to survive need more years to be healthy enough to have a calf. So what to do about it? Check out these graphics from Vermont Fish and Wildlife. Where the infected moose drops off female ticks, they lay their 4,000 eggs and later that year, usually summer or fall, when the moose are most active during the rut, another moose happens by, you know, the questing larva, and the cycle starts all over again. By reducing the density of the moose, there's less ticks getting picked up, so the larvae that don't find a host die when winter comes. We already see areas in southern New Hampshire and the Adirondacks where moose density is lower and the winter ticks are less of a problem for the moose that are there. We're going to circle back to the southern New Hampshire thing in a little bit. According to New Hampshire Fish and Game Moose Project leader Henry Jones. Henry Jones Jr. No, not that Henry Jones. The state of Vermont has already begun to reduce densities and is seeing lower instances of winter tick. There's other solutions to be sure. Pesticides and fungal applications could be applied. But at what cost to the rest of the ecosystem? Never mind the dollar cost for a minute. Long term, fungal pathogens have an unknown effectiveness on ticks. I don't know about the fungal thing anyway. I guess I've seen too many sci-fi shows. No, fungus isn't that smart. The solution that seems to make the most sense, data-wise, is, you know, reducing moose density. It's not always the most palatable solution when the state hopes to draw more visitors to the Great North Woods to see more moose in the wild. Let's back up and look at the history of the moose hunt here in New Hampshire. In 1950, there were an estimated 50 moose in New Hampshire, but then a perfect storm happened. It could be the perfect storm. You had an outbreak of spruce budworm, which lasted from the late 1960s until the early 1990s. I'll put a link in the description below. This killed off millions of cords of spruce and fir trees, resulting in vast areas of clear-cut as people went in and salvaged the wood. As those areas grew back, you had ideal moose habitat and the numbers exploded. In the 90s, the population of moose in New Hampshire were estimated to be a high of about 7,400 moose. Now, it's estimated to be in the three to 4,000 range. In 1988, the state introduced the moose hunt, giving out 75 tags with an estimated statewide population of about 1,600 animals. Last year, 2023, with an estimated higher population, remember that three to 4,000 range, the state gave out just 35 tags. Check out the link below. The data seems to point out a need for lower moose density. Let's go back to the southern New Hampshire thing that I referred to a little bit earlier. Brainworm is a problem in southern areas of the state with higher deer densities. Here's another graphic. I know I love the graphics, right? Deer contract the brainworm larva through a couple of different methods, pass it on, and then the moose pick it up, which ends up killing the moose. The way to reduce this, you guessed it, lower deer densities in areas that are affected. The state's big game management program renews in 2025. It's a 10 year cycle. No doubt that's when all of this is going to come under scrutiny. Let's hope the problem is addressed and some solutions will be agreed upon. I mean, I'm not going to tell you guys anything you don't know. Politics are a real pain in the ass and people have a hard time getting along on this stuff. Be sure to check out all the links in the description because there's a lot of info there for those of you guys that want to get a deeper dive on this. 
Thanks for checking out this week's episode. If you like what you saw, comment, subscribe, like, hit that thumbs up button. You guys know the drill. Thanks a lot for checking us out. We'll see you next time.